Hello, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio here. Got a video just put together today, a uh, a uh, grasshopper file, a definition for making a Milanese uh, strap or band. So I've had one sitting on my desk for quite a while now, staring at me, and I was constantly thinking, oh, maybe in some spare time I'll have a look at, I'll have a look at, building that in Grasshopper. So I know I did post asking for questions for SolidWorks ideas, but I I honestly, I don't feel like doing anything in SolidWorks at the moment. Grasshopper is much more interesting at the moment. Uh, so anyway, here we go. So this is the end result. Yeah, I've got my excited voice on, by the way. I sound like a robot all the time, but moment, I'm excited. Okay. So this was actually needed a little bit of lateral thinking to um, once I figured out how these links were made in reality, uh, a little bit of lateral thinking to to put something together to make it look like the weld that's on the end. Um, just just the cut, but you could add fillets etc on there if you wanted to. So I'll just run through the grasshopper definition. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I've got some variables. Uh, which I've derived from this uh, close-up image I took of the uh, the band, and then captured those variables at the height. That's the height of each say a helix, and then the target link count. How many links across? Strap width, the millimeters, uh, the wire radius. And then the strap thickness. And then I've done some var various things in here, like multiplying or dividing to get some values, like the the link width and repeats and stuff like that. So then I've got that information, and I've also had to take the subtract the wire radius off some of the values here to give me a um, a thickness, and then feed those values into this group here to make a helix. So I've made a line, you can see there, which is the width of the strap plus a few extra turns because I need to trim things back and then this this line gets translated a certain distance away from the center line and then it goes through this point here which is twist so it deforms the object around an axis so my axis is along the x axis and then you can see that I've got this helix with a few extra turns on the end the extra turns are added here um, so I've got 360 degrees multiplied by, I've got 14.5 turns, and then I've added three more that you can see, just to give me some extra sort of curve on each end to trim back later. Okay, so that spiral, the next thing that I want to happen to it is a non-uniform scale, and that scale is controlled by this thickness scale factor down here which is again controlled by a strap thickness then divide by another value i'll put this file online so you can actually have a closer look at it i'm just going to skip through this because i know people sort of get a bit bored if you get into the nitty gritty okay so there's my spiral the next thing i need to do is plug it out in the photo that you've got one spiral which is connected to the next one down that actually makes like a link and it's welded on the outside so I've got an, a link overlap, like a ratio here, because they don't overlap one to one. You can see there, there's the second link. So that ratio rolls, make that 0.9, rolls the distance here, because we've got to allow for our wire thickness, and then the wire's going to um, collide with itself. This does self-collide, and the, the wires do penetrate each other, um, just because I didn't want to spend forever trying to get those, so they didn't do that. It's good enough for a visual. Okay, so the double link in centre, the next thing I've done is I've, I wanted to center. I wanted to center both of these links within file center around the zero zero. So I created a union box around this link and around both links, and then found the center area of that bounding box, and then made a vector and moved that both of those link um, curves to the zero zero world. So next up, well, I want to trim these curves back. So the, the the width of the strap. So to do that, I've got a using the remote fender receiver, which is pretty good, pretty handy when you you know you get bigger definitions of this. So I've got a, a dimension here, twenty point five, 
and then I've made a box um, which is 20.5 20, 20 in this dimension and then I'm controlling the X, uh, Y and Z uh, normal amounts just to make sure the box is outside of the um, curves because we're going to be trimming those. Now what I have done is create an offset of this box which is inside its offset by 0.1 millimeter. That's because I need to allow I'm going to link these two curves together. I'm going to trim them and then put a blend between the two to make um, cut detail that I showed earlier. I'm going to, I've referred that the end blob. So what I'm going to do first is use this offset box to split these curves. You can see there, intersected, and then curve closest point, and shattered those curves. Shattered the curves and then um, listed the item to keep, give me the central section which I want to retain. And then I've made a just a simple pipe with the wire radius, which is way over here, and that is a pipe. Okay, so there's the main body of the of the link, double link, and now this gets trimmed and welded on the outside. And to try and emulate that, I've created what I said before this end blob pipe. So I'll just show you what I've done here. I've created blends that go between the upper and lower link. So we've made one big one big curve basically that's what I'm going to make one B rep and then I'm going to slice the side off and to get this kind of blobbiness weld look on the end instead of using a straight consistent pipe like we have here I'm going to use a variable pipe with three dimensions so reparameterize the curve at zero and one I want it to equal the Y radius you can see the Y radius is plugged in zero and one and on 0.5 so halfway along that curve I want to use um, I'm going to, I've got a multiplier here, so my end blob size is multiplying the wire radius. So if I turn this on, you can see there it's better in the middle. Okay, same on this end. And then I've joined the main pipe along with the variable pipe into one body. And now I've split and joined B reps. Now if you go back here, I made this trim box originally, which is, this is exactly to the width of the, of the strap, 20.5. This offset here, that was just to, to trim my curves back a bit to give this um, this blend on the end some breathing room. And now I'm going to use this box. You can see the bit I'm going to split off there sticking out the end. So that's why I added the relief here. Okay. So we go over here, run some split and trim. Oh, sorry, not splits. Yes, yeah, split B rep. Split B rep. Uh, and then use a cull index to give me the inside faces on the end. So the resultant piece of the box. And then just a list item to give me the um, central portion of the, the of the link. And I've joined it all together. You can see there. Uh, next up is patterning this. So I'll just quickly show you. So that uh, end blob there, I went over here, um, made that 1.2 millimeters. You can see sort of emulating this um, sort of weld thing that goes on if you have a close look at one of these uh, one of these um, straps in reality. They also have a softer rate, a little radius around the outside. I'm just guessing the process, but it looks like it goes through some sort of cut and weld um, bit. Okay, so divide reference curve and pattern. So I've got a reference curve here. So that's, um, I've set that curve. And then double link spacing. This is a value which comes back from way over here. So I've got an overlap of 0.8, so double link spacing should be 1.6 because double link I've called a single link is it's one of these the double link is is this whole body so the two it's a wire that are welded together okay so I've used divide by length you can see there that curves divided and then I've culled point on the end there's, there's some weird stuff going on um pull points to curve uh created planes and then basically used orient to orient these the, the main link along that curve is the final final part and it all seems to work all right I go into a side elevation and uh, we make the curve longer we'll just update it takes a little while because it's got a mesh again uh, and it'll add any additional links in that it needs yeah, so I think generally it's really successful. Something I wanted to try out. Um, 
the little challenge. So again, yeah, I'll put this file on uh, in the description of this video. Um, so you can muck around with it. There's no doubt there's uh, tidier ways to do some of the stuff I've done here. As I said, I want to get this done less than a day. So yeah, it's probably ways to optimize it. Um, I'll internalize the reference curve and yeah, it should be all good. Okay, so there's building a Milanese scrap or band in Rhino using Grasshopper. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Thanks for watching. If you find this useful, um, maybe consider subscribing. Cheers. Bye.